All right, guys. So I'm going to explain this a little bit deeper. All right. So to keep in mind what we built upon on the last on the four first four videos. All right. So we built a product registration. And we did that based upon, uh, at that point in time, we did it on a periodic task. Now, I've since then changed that to a uh, registration event. Um, the trigger event is going to be access to registration. Um, so I have a photo eye, which I've, uh, I've wired to registration one and registration two. The same exact input going to registration one and two, so it doesn't matter which one I use. But I chose to. Uh, I then said execute the task if no event occurs within five milliseconds. Why am I doing that? Is because of the simple fact that I am choosing to disarm my uh, registration events in the same routine or the same task, and I want that to be accomplished. I want that to be accomplished and at that point in time when there's no motion whatsoever, obviously my input uh, is not going to be made. So I'm not going to trigger an event. Therefore, I want to actually come back in and scan. I want to scan this routine. That is what that execute five after, uh, if there's no event, then go ahead and execute every five milliseconds. Perfectly fine. All right. so. Um, uh, we've also come in and again uh, this the disarm is dis is disarming registration one our registration two and registration two our registration one uh, the registration I've built just like this again coming back uh, to explain this a little bit deeper um, I'm doing the positive edge and negative edge and basically of the same exact uh, 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 photo eye right I have one photo eye and I've wired back to two of the registration inputs. Basically, you paralleled over to uh, one input to the other. So that's as simple as it gets. Now I'm making sure that my axis is on and I am using two different inputs. Why am I using two different inputs? Because if I use one single input and I don't use it, do it in a certain fashion, it will give me an error command. So I'm choosing to do the simple effect and actually use uh, the event one and event two uh, arm status. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. One is because I can easily come in and uh, use the registration position and the registration uh, against the other registration position and get my registration difference. So this is uh, in my environment, this is uh, when the photo eye is seeing the reflector on the wheel. I have a four inch wheel with a reflective tape about, uh, let's just say about a one inch long. Uh, so what I'm doing is doing that and you can see that by a trend I have. So what I'm gonna do is quickly start the system so you can see it. I'll start the system, let the start system start. Um, it is currently going and it doesn't matter what speed that I run because of the simple fact of the event will trigger and it will give me my definition down here or give me my uh, the, the difference between registration the positive edge and the negative edge of that photo eye when it actually happens based upon those registration events right now again I'm using the PC and uh, I want you to note um, the, the most important things again are going to be the when it comes to uh, understanding servos and the way they, they uh, the timing is. Servos are the very first thing that gets scanned inside of a program. So you're not going to see, uh, when it comes down to seeing uh, in the GUI or the graphical interface, you're not going to be able to see the PC bit come on all the time. But this is why we use, uh, and we're not going to see it all the time on a, on a trend, uh, but what we can see is the difference and that's how we know it is actually working so i want to pull up the trend itself right here and you can see the trend now um, the registration status or registration input and the training uh, which is my servo dot registration status one registration status two are the top three lines which is going to be again the red line the future line and the white line now down here the light blue line is the registration difference you can see that is varying just slightly because it's under uh, 0.1 and then the product 
uh, length. Now the product length I'm slightly doing a little bit different because when we watch, if we watch the first two videos, you can see that the product length right here is just using the very first. Um, it's very the very first actual um, registration event. It's not using both of them. So I added, I come back and added the second uh, registration event right here. And when I did so, uh, I did this based upon the actual, um, the actual, uh, the help instruction. Basically, again, the ladder, um, ladder logic for continuous instruction or continuous registration detection. I'm using that, and again, when it comes down to it, make sure this all corresponds with course rate update, and it does work with that as well. My course rate update in this environment is going to be four milliseconds, so it's very small. Now, my maximum scan time of that, again, is very minute. It's actually under a millisecond, so I could get this a lot faster if I wanted to. But uh, speed, again, doesn't necessarily help you if, if what you're doing is not going to be read properly. So when it comes down to understanding the way the servos are read and the way your registration is done to accomplish your goal, registration, again, when it rolls onto it, it's going to be done. Uh, everybody's scenario is going to be completely different. Uh, it is based upon whatever product you're running, whatever uh, what that product is running on. Is it a conveyor? Is it on something else? Is it you know whatever your your natural physical limitations are. Um, also, too, making sure your input wiring is uh, is wired the proper way, like normally open, normally closed. Um, how is that input getting interpreted to the actual uh, kinetics drive via the uh, the again the registration input status. Again, so that's just another another thing to think about, right? Uh, again, when it comes down to it, the PC bits you're not going to see working, but you can see those do change because they are currently working. But just the graphical interface is just not quick enough for you to see that. Not a big deal. Um, that's just the way you know life is when it comes down to it. Processors scan faster, way faster than we can see. Sadly, we don't get to see stuff. That's why we have trends, and sometimes the trends don't work as fast as we want them to, even though I put this trend at one millisecond. So coming down to it, um, just wanted to show you that. And again, you know, let me show you the registration disarm. You can see that it is currently armed right here. I'm gonna show you it when I stop it, why I choose to use that registration right here. This will actually stop both of those registration arm events just like it just did so you've seen that actually happen and I wanted to show you that in real time value again hopefully that the both the videos did help out close that close that loop to kind of help you understand um, you know the, the, the important things about servos and servo controls and, and registration and stuff of that nature again this is detecting a positive edge and a negative edge but when it comes down to it it is just uh, a simple um, four inch wheel with a um, one inch piece of reflective tape and when the photo I sees a reflective tape it's measuring it not a big deal right real simple real easy uh, but again very powerful because I'm using the registration position one against and subtracting register a registration one uh, position one against registration position two and getting my difference and that is going that is actually constant all the time it is actually very 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 precise so when it comes down to it I just want to show another video on how that's done and hopefully that gave you a lot of insight on how things can be done in registration again your your environment is going to be completely different from mine the when it comes to registration everybody's environment is different but knowing the principles and concepts and how things are put together will help you succeed. So hopefully this helped pass on some information, some golden nuggets to help you troubleshoot your systems or even program them from scratch to get a better outcome. With that said, see you guys on the next one.